Hi guys, welcome back and I am so excited once again to bring you a sneak preview of RAS version 0.6 with the Adrissians, yes, a true Thracian nation. Now this is really exciting to me guys because there's a lot of Thracian fans out there and pretty much most mods do not represent the Thracians at all really. They, they amalgamate them into sort of a Dacian and Thracian faction, and RAS has really brought the true Thracian feel back with these rosters. So it's really, really cool. I can't wait. So before we get going, let's talk about the history of the roster. But before we do that, I thought I'd bring a bit of Britain into this roster review with this stance here. That's a stance that you'll see many men uh, take part in when they're going out at the weekend in Britain. You want sham. You want sham. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the history of this glorious Thracian roster. The Adrissian kingdom was once a predominant power in Thrace, having most of the other Thracians under its sway in the late 5th and early 4th century BC. However, its power began to crumble in the mid 4th century BC when it was divided into three parts in the 340s by civil war. Then Philip II of Macedon defeated all three kings and expanded at the cost of the Thracians. The Adrisians survived, however, but with the migration of the Celts and the establishment of their kingdom of Tylus, things got even worse in the early 3rd century BC. Now it's but a shadow of its former self. It survived, but it will need a major rebuilding job. The Thracians are known for two units, infantry wielding the falcs like a rom fire, a cutting, often two-handed sword, and the original version of the peltasts. Their lack of melee infantry and proper archers or slingers is made up by a strong, heavy cavalry and an impressive royal guard, which, you know, we're going to have a look at later, but they are probably the most beautiful unit we have seen so far. Very close to the uh, Royal Guard of Bithynia, but a bit different, but looking absolutely glorious. So when we look at this roster as a whole, guys, you can see not a huge amount of infantry, but a lot of skirmishers and some really good cavalry as well. So this army is all about sort of ambushing, about skirmishing, and about heavy shock infantry charging into the enemy and doing serious damage when the time is right when they're in disarray against those organized formations you're going to be fighting against and it is a really cool roster indeed and, and a quick note guys um i am going to be playing these guys in version 0.6 so this is really really exciting for me so let's start with the thracian slingers yes the thracian slingers these boys are slingers and I love the Thracian garbs that they've got on, but um, <laughs> these guys, yeah, the stats are not fantastic. Two morale, so basically if the enemy's within a mile of them, they will run. Uh, melee attack of five, a missile attack of four, m uh, missile range of 140, and ammo of 32. Total defense of six, massive six, one of which is armor, and that armor is probably their little bum bags ready to go. <laughs> but yeah, they are not the greatest unit, your bargain basement unit. You're only going to use these in defensive cities and to garrison cities as well, because they're a nice cheap unit for you there as well. But let's have a look at the Thracian archers. Now, these guys are actually pretty decent. I do really like the stats on these guys. And once again, let's look at the glorious new Thracian designs here. Completely different to the Greek ones, of course, and looking really nice and really cool. I love these Thracian patterns. They are fantastic. Really, really cool. I do love them indeed. And, and on top of that, the Thracian hats as well. Very nice. But these guys are a really decent low-level archer unit. So four morale and only eight defense. So really bad defense and morale again with only one armor. So they'll die to missiles very quickly. Melee attack of 6, but you're not going to want to get these guys into melee. But that missile attack of 9 is 3 better than the Greek archers. And they have a 160 missile range. So a 30 meter longer range than the Greek archers 
as well. Really long range, as you can see, which is fantastic. 30 missiles as well. So, you know, these guys, they have their, you know, problems in terms of, you know, low defense, not no defense against missiles, low morale. But in terms of an archer, a pure archer unit, they're actually quite decent. And they're going to do some good damage all the way through the game. So, fantastic. Good. I really like those guys. So let's move on to the Thracian Peltas. And here they are. This is what Adrissia is known for. One of the main units it's known for. And again, we've got the really cool shields. The really cool designs on all of this. We've got the really nice Thracian um, uh, capes here as well. Cloaks that look awesome. Just look at the... Uh, colors in these and the patterns fantastic really nice to see but these guys solid uh peltast unit 13 morale 11 missile attack and armor piercing secondary weapon so an armor piercing sword guys which is fan dabby dozy 12 melee attack with that armor piercing sword is really really good Really, really good. And a total defense of 18. Of course, no defense against missiles, really. Five defense, so four shield and one armor. But a defense skill of 13. And these guys, although, you know, their defense is low, although their melee attacks only 12, uh, they're going to be able to fire Javis into the enemy. And then they're easily going to be able to hold up against Hoplites and that sort of unit. Remember, Hoplites have double the defense of this. But with the armor-piercing weapon, these guys are going to be fine. I don't see them being a problem at all. So when you're on your lower tier units, guys, and you're recruiting as a Drissia, these are the units you want to gonna get, you're going to want to get. And I never thought I'd say that about a javelin unit. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> these are the units that you're going to want to get. A really nice early game unit, hybrid unit, that's going to do some plenty of damage with that armor-piercing weapon. So... Let's also look at the Mercenary Agrarian Infantry. And I was struggling whether to put these in Infantry or Missile. But you can see, really cool looking unit. And I love the uh, the formation of these guys compared to, say, the Thracian Peltas who are regular. These guys are more regular. And you can, you can see, look at those swords. Scary, scary swords. And again, armor-piercing curved swords there. And these guys are pretty much just a better version of the Thracian Peltas, as we can see. 13 morale, whereas here it's 14, and a 13 melee attack rather than 12. In terms of the uh, the Javis, it's exactly the same, but a bit more defense as well. Uh, two more armor, one more armor, should I say. So six defense against missiles, but a lot more defense skill of 19. 25 total defense. So these guys, if the Thracians don't stand up against Hoplites and Theroperoi, these guys certainly will with an armor-piercing secondary weapon. So a really nice unit. A fantastic hybrid unit, in fact. And this is what you're going to see throughout this roster. The armor-piercing uh, of the Thracians is fantastic. And we don't really see that through many of the other rosters. I don't think many of the Greek factions have any armor-piercing units. Whereas the Thracians, although they might not have as many different units have got some really strong ones in certain situations. So, really nice unit. I love that one. So let's move on to the infantry. And we've got two units of our infantry here. We've got the Thracian run for four. Right, here's our old mate again. You want Sham? Here he is. Fantastic. Looking absolutely glorious. Really cool. And you can tell they're not heavily armoured, but that is re represented in the stats here. Four armour. Six shields, so 10 defense against missiles, so not the greatest defense against missiles. So if they have one weakness, this unit, it is their defense against missiles, guys. So don't let them get javies thrown at them, because they will decide to fall <laughs> very quickly. And again, if we go behind, look at the glorious shields, the glorious capes, and the plumage as well, and the helms going on there. I love, I just love these capes. I love the designs, the Thracian designs. Looking so nice indeed. But 28 defense. Fantastic defense for a uh, non-heavily armored unit. Uh, 13 morale. 16 melee attack. And two jabbies of 14 uh, mel uh, missile attack. And an armor-piercing sword as well. Which is glorious, guys. It is glorious. They are going 
to be shredding through the enemy with 16 melee attack that's armor piercing. We saw them last time, didn't we? And they also frighten nearby enemy. Are they fast moving as well? No, not quite fast moving, but a charge of 14 is glorious as well for an infantry unit. A really nice light infantry shock unit. And because they're light infantry, they're going to move faster than some of, some of the heavy infantry that you're going to be going up against, like phalangites, that sort of thing. So these guys are, in fact, a fantastic unit. Just look at the, uh, the detail on these shields. If you can see that on my uh, recording, like the, the textures on there. And like I say every time, the level of detail that has gone into these units is fantastic. Like... It doesn't need to be that detail. Who is ever going to zoom in that close apart from me? <laughs> so, like, you don't need to have that detail. But it's there anyway, just in case. And that's what just makes this mod so glorious and so fantastic. Glorious and fantastic. There you go, guys. You, you got them both in one sentence. Fantastic. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, well, um, <laughs> yeah, a really good unit. Uh, that is to say a fantastic unit. A really really decent unit this and it's going to be the backbone of your armies and that frightened nearby in enemy infantry is really strong as well so these guys are going to be a route uh, a, a route fest for the enemy really cool indeed right then let's have a look at the coolest unit i think i've seen in the game so far here they are the adrician royal warriors and just look at them and before we even go into the stats there's a few things that we want to go over with the look of them that make them look so good we got the sword of king Suthis the third here as well so a sword design that came from the history of king Suthis over here very nice indeed a scary looking sword and again looking at them the glorious breastplates and they also have these lovely, almost like torques. I don't know what the actual name is of these around their necks. A lot of them decorated with different designs, different gods. If we come right in, you can see different gods and animals right on there. We've got a wolf over here. Different ones. Sort of a, there's a few with Medusa on as well. Looking very cool indeed. Just look how glorious they look. Absolutely beautiful. And then on top of that, we have the Greaves down here, decorated with the Snake Goddess of Thrace, which is pretty decent, pretty cool indeed over here, as you can see. Different gods and goddesses all on the Greaves down here. If I uh, deselect them there, looking absolutely fantastic. What a unit. We've got, we've got plumage in a plenty. We've got capage. In a plenty as well. I don't even, that doesn't even make sense, but you know what I mean. Anyway, we've got loads of plumage, loads of capage, and again, glorious shield work. This lovely detail on the neck of them, and again, some absolutely stunning helms to go with it. What a fantastic looking unit. Honestly, one of the most beautiful units in a mod filled with beautiful units. What a glorious, glorious unit but let's talk about their stats and as you can tell they're pretty good <laughs> 20 morale 44 defense with a defense against missiles of 15 and 29 defense skill melee attack of 13 with a sword so that is great and a couple of javis with 16 melee attack to fire into the enemy. And again, a really decent charge of 13. Which is just fantastic for an infantry unit. What a glorious, glorious unit. Really, really nice. And these are your heavy infantry options. Your heavy infantry boyos in the army. Looking really cool indeed. These guys are going to stand up pretty much against anything. Maybe not charges from cavalry because they're not spearmen. But you don't really want to get them into charges from cavalry. The good thing about this roster, although you may notice there are no spearmen, you have some very, very strong cavalry. Cavalry strong enough to do some really big damage against enemy cavalry. 
and good anti-cavalry options. So you've got plenty of anti-cavalry in the cavalry. You don't need anti-cavalry infantry. But what a glorious, glorious infantry unit. Just look how good they are. Oh my days. What a unit. What a unit. But anyway, I'm going to stop waxing lyrical over those guys. And let's uh, move on to your cavalry. And you have so many options in here. It's really quite glorious. We've got our shock cavalry here. Our Thracian light lancers. And these guys, fast moving, very good stamina, really, really good charge. And not bad stats at all. The only thing lacking is their defense. 15 defense, only three of which is armor. And again, we can see the Thracian design on these boys. Very cool. I love the uh, the saddles, if you can call them saddles. The different uh, patterns on the saddles there. Very cool indeed. Just another bit of detail that marks these guys out as different units. Really nice. 13 morale, 11 melee attack, and an alt attack of 11. With a charge of 28. Now, that charge of 28 is fantastic. It's a really, really good charge. That is a really strong charge for such a light cavalry unit. These guys are the guys that you're going to want to charge into the enemy when the Ronfoy or Foroi or the, uh, you know, your skirmishers have done a load of damage into a unit. These guys are the smash and grab unit or the unit that's going to charge down routing enemies. These are a really nice uh, shock cavalry unit. Very light, like we've said, but that means they're going to be very fast and maneuverable. Even a charge into enemy cavalry and then a dash out, they're going to be fast enough to get in and out. So they're going to do good damage against cavalry as well as infantry. Just don't leave them extended uh, combat for long. But a really nice unit nonetheless. A good base level unit. And it's going to do you absolute wonders early game to have such a light, quick, cavalry, maneuverable unit. Because, you know... The Greeks don't really get cavalry until they get to Zistaphoroi, apart from the Prodromoi. And uh, these guys will be able to, to keep pace with the Prodromoi. And they're very unlikely to start recruiting Zistaphoroi early on. So you're going to have a cavalry advantage right from the start. And then let's have a look at our Odrysian Skirmisher Cavalry. And just look at these guys. I love the Thracian look, I'm not going to lie. Uh, i just come back from Rome, and uh, in one of the museums, there was a huge statue of a Thracian warrior uh, from, I think it was the, uh, the 1st century BC, or 2nd century BC, still greatly intact, and it was, it was stunning, and it's kind of, you know, piqued my interest in this culture quite a bit. Very, very nice looking units, very cool indeed, I just love... The look. I love how unique the Thracians look compared to the Greeks. Obviously, it's a different culture, so they're going to look different. But I just love the unmistakable Thracian-ness of these guys. <laughs> but let's talk about their stats then. 13 defense, 4 of which is armor, 9 defense skill, which is pretty similar to the Light Lancers, but a little bit less. Uh, a bit more armor, just less defense skill. Morale of 9, so not a huge amount of morale. Melee attack of 8, and a missile attack of 9. So these guys are your prodromoi. They're your skirmisher cavalry unit. Try not to get them into melee. They've only got a 19 charge, which is fine, but it's not light lancer territory. So if you want missile cav, these are a good option early game. So let's move on to the mercenary Pionian cavalry. Now, one thing to note, guys, they're going to have a slightly different horse uh, when it comes out, not this armored horse. That armored horse is reserved for the uh, the general. So it's just going to have a slightly different horse. But apart from that, these guys look really cool, don't they? Really cool. A heavy cavalry unit. And this guy is just a um, heavy cavalry unit. And they've got an armor-piercing secondary weapon, which I believe on this cavalry is not their spear. It's their second weapon, which is their alt attack there. So these guys are cavalry killers. They are cavalry destroyers, should I say. With a 32 charge, a 15 defense skill, and 8 armor. Total defense of 23, morale of 14, and a melee attack of 12. With either, either weapon, but with the armor-piercing weapon, that is going to just destroy 
armored cavalry. So if you ever come up against cataphracts, use these guys if you can. Or you go up against Zistaphore, those sorts of units. Their weapons are going to destroy the armored cavalry of Greece and the armored cavalry of Anatolia as well. So a really good cavalry killer. But on top of that, it's going to do fine against um, against infantry as well. 32 charge is pretty nice, guys. It's pretty, pretty nice. So they're going to do plenty well against the Paeonian, uh, against the, uh, the infantry with that massive charge. So a really good unit there and a certified cavalry killer. Now on to one of your more elite cavalry units. And let's just have a look once again at these boys. How glorious do they look? Absolutely stunning. I like these um, sort of scaled Linothoraces with the studs in them as well. Quite cool. Quite different from, uh, you know, from a lot of the other armor sets we've seen. I love these little uh, clasps they've got on their cloaks. That you can see there again, little details and these little bits of extra color coming down below the Linothoraces, really nice. And again, the shields. Just look at the shields, fantastic. But this, I believe, is your only shield. Uh, no, the uh, skirmisher cavalry have a have a shield as well. So these guys, really, really good cavalry unit. We can compare them to the Zistaphore as well, just to show you how good they are. 18 morale, 14 melee attack, and two little javies to throw into the enemy before charging. So, almost a shock cavalry throwing those javies into the enemy. Oh, look at this. We've not seen these before. I just noticed them before. These little horned helms. Cool. Look like antenna. Very nice. Not seen them. They are really cool. Really cool. Uh, but yeah, a couple of javies to throw into the enemy before charging them. And you've got a 34 charge, which is glorious. It is glorious. That is a fantastic charge. With a total defense of 39 armor, 6 shield. So 15 defense against missiles with a defense skill of 15. Not armor piercing, unlike the Pionians. But these guys are so good as well. Even better. If we compare them to a Zistaphoroi, which is a standard Greek heavy cavalry. The Zistaphoroi has a 15 morale and 12 melee attack as well uh, whereas these guys have 18 and 14 obviously and the Zistaphoroi has 23 defense and 35 charge so one less charge but seven more defense so these guys are going to eat Zistaphoroi up for breakfast now you can see why I'm saying you don't need spearmen in this roster they have plenty of cavalry killers in here and the cavalry killers are awesome against infantry as well but let's have a look at our Thracian Royal Bodyguards as our final unit. Really nice unit. Armor-piercing secondary weapon, which refers to their melee attack. So a 14 attack with an armor-piercing weapon. 18 morale, 33 charge, and 31 defense. Now, if we compare this to a Greek general that has 18 morale, 14 melee attack as well. They also have 34 defense and 47 charge. So a Greek general has a much better charge and a little bit better defense. But they don't have armor piercing, 14 melee attack, which is glorious. These guys are going to be your general killers. Because remember, generals generally have quite a bit of armor. Especially the Asian generals if you're fighting in the east. So, yes, you want these guys fighting other generals because although that Greek general's got a three more defense, they're going to cut through the armor. These guys are going to shred enemy generals. What a great unit. Really nice. And again, that 33 charge, really cool. And once again, just gloriously, gloriously good how they look. Oh, fantastic. Well, guys, I think we've covered the whole roster. And you can see it's quite a robust roster although when you look at it it's only got a couple of infantry units with these added hybrid units in there's plenty for you to do if i was making this roster what i would do is you know fill it with romphophoroi and royal warriors as well as have a few agrianian infantry on the flanks to do some extra damage on those flanks with the thracian archers and then i'd look at mixing in both the paeonian and the noble cavalry in their early game, of course, I'm going to have the light in, light cavalry. Really, really robust roster. I'd probably, you know, go uh, with 
maybe half cavalry with this roster because I don't think you need a lot of infantry to do a lot of damage. But let's get going. We are fighting the Egyptians today, guys. That is who we are facing. And we're going to show them very soon. It'll either be the Egyptians or the Bosporans next. So uh, we'll get to have a look at those very soon. Uh, but let's get our skirmisher cavalry trying to take out the enemy cavalry as well, which is cool. And then, uh, yeah, we've got these units. So we'll get you slightly back. Like I said, we are certified cavalry killers. So there's not much we can do that's going to be a problem here. We're going to do really well. The only issue we might have is the amount of sort of uh, infantry we're going to have to face. But like I said, not going to be too much of a worry. I think we can get straight in there to them. They're firing their javis, but they're going to get caught, surely. Yep, they're going to... Oh, no. If you hadn't run over there, you, they would have got caught. But anyway, let's come back up. That's fine. Okay, they've gone straight in there with those guys. That's fine. Hmm. Let's come up. Let's come up. So, let's get these guys into there. Get fighting the Egyptian long spearmen. And I'm sure we'll do really well. So we've got you guys as well. You guys, the Agranian infantry, they should fight quite well against the Machamoys. You can see that power of the scares nearby enemy infantry is just so strong. So let's come forward to fight the Phalangites. Remember, the Phalangites are going to be a bit of a problem. Let's get you guys forward. We'll bring you along the back. You're actually going to go around the other side, my elite cavalry. So we should shred. Yeah, we've just shredded those boys. Indeed. Let's see what these guys can do against them. Hopefully, they're going to scare them. And uh, let's see whether we can get a little bit of a uh, charge off. What's that? The Matro Foroy. Get rid of those. You guys come round. You guys come round too. You guys come forward. That should break them. Fantastic. Oh, we're breaking all of their infantry with our boys. Because they scare nearby infantry. <laughs> Yes, glorious, glorious, glorious. <laughs> Fantastic. You guys get in there. Go charge him. We've not even managed to use our good boys yet. Let's go for the charge here then, just to do it. Uh, yeah, we've just scared everyone off. Let's watch this charge. Fantastic. Okay, they've won on that side. That's fine. Here we go. Bang! Yes! Double charge. Absolutely destroyed those boys. <laughs> nice. 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 Let's get there. Uh, we'll get our good boys out. And you two. Get into there. Oh, we, we might have uh, bitten off a little bit more than we can chew here. I didn't realize two units were coming back. Get them. You guys get those Machimoy cavalry. Ah, who cares? My general doesn't matter. These guys are just so strong anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to charge into those long spears again. Bit annoying that they've come back, you know. Just scared off initially, and then bang, they're back. This should be a good charge. There we are. Kill him. Oof, deaded. Very deaded. That should hopefully get rid of the uh, the phalangites. You guys come round. Where's our other cavalry? Yeah, charging these guys down. Fantastic. Oh, glorious. What a nice... You can see how versatile this roster is. Why would you chase down my units there? That's just annoying. That just means the battle's going to last so much longer than it needs to. Catch them, please. Yeah, get rid of them. And then let's get rid of the phalangites straight through. Oh. Yes, glorious. It is nice playing a Rome Total War again. It's very responsive. I love how responsive the battles are in this game. Now we've only got these guys really to, to, to fight with. They've not got much. See, like at the minute, we're just literally charging like into the front of Phalangites and then charging them in the rear. And it's working very nicely. They're not even, you know, they're not even uh, doing much damage to any of our men. Although my uh, skirmisher cavalry has gone. Ugh, why are those guys all the way over there? We're going to have to speed it up now because of that. Get into the back of there. They're already dead. Go charge them down. 
Why do they keep coming back? Stop coming back. Just go and die, okay? You don't know when you're broken. <laughs> when you're done. Ugh, these fools. They ran all the way across the map. Literally for no reason. Let's go kill them. But you can just see how versatile this roster is, you know? You don't... I wasn't even paying attention again in that battle, and we've just shredded them. Like... <laughs> And we are playing on hard once again. Oh, there we are. Didn't even need to charge. You can see. Just a sh roster that shreds. That, that, that morale damage of both the armor piercing, the charge, and the scares nearby enemy infantry is just so strong. And it's something that you should use to your advantage all the time when you're playing this roster. But let's have a look. Thracian slingers and archers not doing great. Peltas fine. Infantry, Ron for four are doing fantastic. Royal Warriors doing well as well. Light Lancers, look at that, 98. Really nice. And then Pionian Cavalry and the Noble Cavalry, 184. What a glorious, glorious roster. I hope you enjoyed, guys. Please do like, please do subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.